There is so much of significance going on in the world that totally dominates the media cycle. You know, we're talking interest rate rises, war, politics. But believe me, it's all a part of a steady diet of distraction. Now, I say distraction because there are many other things going on that receive next to no public attention. But they really do have the potential to influence your life. Now, some of them involve our regular sparring partners on this program, people or groups like the World Economic Forum and the United Nations. Take, for example, the United Nations. The UN is warning that the world is headed towards a global recession and prolonged stagnation unless we quickly change the current policy course of monetary and fiscal tightening in advanced economies. That's contained in a new report released by the UN Conference on Trade and Development. It goes on to say, the policy-induced global recession could be worse than the global financial crisis of 2007 to 2009 and adds excessive monetary tightening and inadequate financial support could expose developing world economies further to cascading crises. And while all regions will be affected, alarm bells are ringing most for developing countries, many of which are edging closer to debt defaults. Let me put that in plain language to you. As the Western world puts up interest rates and stops the money printing, the world is grinding to a halt and it could cause a catastrophic financial problem. But the underlying undercurrent of this is that if we didn't have so many pesky governments and inept politicians to ruin our lives, then maybe we wouldn't be driven into this recession. And I suspect the United Nations means things would be so much better if the UN, in all its unelected wisdom, was actually running the world. Then you see they could enact more policies from our overlords at the World Economic Forum. We speak about them all the time here. They are still keen on transforming the world in their image via the Great Reset and the grandly titled Fourth Industrial Revolution. And I have to say, they sound somewhat buoyant over how things are progressing thus far. See, right now, the WF are providing a platform for those pushing a My Carbon initiative. And, OK, they'll describe it differently, but in my words, it's essentially a personal carbon social credit system that will track everything you do, everything you buy, everything you eat. It's like Big Brother. Now, to understand why the WF are so happy, I'm going to quote directly from their website. Here it goes. COVID-19 was the test of social responsibility. A huge number of unimaginable restrictions for public health were adopted by billions of citizens across the world. There were numerous examples globally of maintaining social distancing, wearing masks, mass vaccinations, and acceptance of contract tracing applications for public health, which demonstrated the core of individual social responsibility. That's the WF's words. And why wouldn't they be encouraged by that? I mean, the world accepted unimaginable restrictions with nary a whimper. Imagine, just imagine how that is going to embolden their next PSYOPs project as they attempt to enslave us all. And they're also boasting about their fourth industrial revolution. It's making progress, apparently. And they're using blockchain technology, likely, which will be integrated with central bank digital currencies, to keep track of everything we do. But it's all to save the planet, of course. That's why, you see, they advocate increased costs for carbon-intensive activities. Now, these activities are things like transport, construction, electricity and the like. And they also want to reduce demand for certain, quote, unspecified things. But I'm guessing they mean the important stuff that I just discussed that really builds a civilised society. But, of course, it could also include, say, meat, air travel, how many children you can have. I mean, who knows how far they want to take this demand reduction in the name of decarbonising the planet. And to top it all off, they want the setting of personal levels of acceptable emissions and a new definition of a fair share of personal emissions to enter the lexicon. Nothing to worry about there at all, is there? Now, if you are a conspiracy theorist, which is actually the name the left give to those who can predict the future with remarkable accuracy, you might think this is all happening by design. I mean, the WEF have been upfront about their gender for us. WEF founder Klaus Schwab even wrote about it in a book entitled The Great Reset. That's where you'll own nothing and be happy. 
And we do see a global coordination of attacks on our way of life, on our customs, our morals and our values. Now, these attacks are levied on nation states as well who oppose this agenda by extraordinary and what I consider to be illegal sanctions of those governments and of individuals residing there. Our Anglosphere leaders, they're meant to be the ones representing the free world. Well, they're also pushing global censorship and global taxation. They are weaponising law enforcement and tax collectors against those who resist. And these same leaders celebrate movements that rely on deceit and destruction and chaos to divide society, while a largely compliant media mostly report only the official interpretation of events. These agents of political change are now so emboldened they will happily lie and they seem to have no fear of being exposed. That's why they seem happy to misrepresent everything from war to science, from economics to biology, in order to condition you to actually accept what is unacceptable. Now, these things had been done before our very eyes, and yet most people refuse to see it. So many still labour under the belief that government does what it does for our benefit. But if that were true, would our nation be nearly $1 trillion in debt? Would Europe be on the cusp of a financial contagion? Would America be a society divided by racial and identity politics? And if government was so helpful, why would allowing all of us to keep more of the money we earn be deemed so controversial amongst politicians? I mean, surely we're capable of spending our money better, better than any government can. The truth of the matter is that governments around the world are truly desperate. They've made such a mess of things that we're actually on the brink of ruin. And that's why they want these magnificent distractions that I spoke of earlier. They're hoping the more you focus on the light at the end of the tunnel, that you won't see the train that's heading your way.